and people that are literally talking about killing somebody. House Republican whip Steve Scalise has seen just how scary threats can be. He was shot and nearly killed in an attack at a congressional baseball practice in Alexandria last year. Scalise says increasingly angry political rhetoric is driving the surge. You don't see enough people speaking out against it, and I've been very vocal about this. Do people still threaten you? Yeah. Members on both sides of the political aisle say they're seeing an increase. The vitriol, the, the nastiness, uh, the, the harsh language. Maryland Democratic Congressman Anthony Brown says he's called authorities several times because of threats sent to his office. We've had uh, um, one threat where, you know, they inquired where I live, which cer certainly suggests that uh, I'm not only am I at risk, but my family as well. The threats also affect thousands of our area's government staffers who are often on the receiving end of those messages. It came to a head where he finally just, he threatened to kill our district director. Michael Collins is longtime chief of staff to Georgia Democrat John Lewis. Last year, authorities prosecuted an Atlanta man for threatening Lewis's staff. They called counselors to help deal with the stress. When people use social media in a negative way and, and dispute this hate, it's, it's, it's difficult. Tyler Schmidt says he's given up on social media and has advice for others who just want to vent. Everybody seems to be on Facebook or, or Twitter or Instagram trying to say something to get noticed. What would you tell them? Um, careful what you tweet. Federal authorities say they've also seen an increase in using social media to make hoax threats against schools and other public institutions. And the FBI today issued a warning about it, saying it can carry a penalty of up to five years per threat. But authorities tell us their goal is not to prosecute what's said on social media, but to stop the problems before they escalate. Scott McFarland, News 4 IT. Yeah, everybody needs to take a breath. Thank mm -hmm. you, Scott. Well, it has arrived, and it is yeah. pouring in a lot of parts. Doug? Stick out there. Uh, yeah, guys, I mean, just a nasty mess out there on the on the evening rush. I mean, you can just take a look at the radar right here. I-95, really a mess right now. You take a look at the uh, traffic out there uh, down along I-95. This is around Woodbridge. Notice not moving much at all, especially on the right side of your screen. That, I believe, is southbound. It is just a, uh, just a terrible mess down along I-95 and will continue to be through the rest of the evening hours. Take a look at the radar. You see what I'm talking about here. We've got rain across the entire area, but notice right here through I-95, just extremely heavy rain one to three inches per hour is now falling across the area uh, 270 the beltway all looking quite nasty but especially in towards this area uh, in and around the district we're seeing even heavier rain move in right now down around the uh, robinson terminal area around 395 and 495 right over towards burke over towards braddock road some very heavy rain there across 50 towards chevrolet over towards oxen hill seeing some of that very heavy rain and then right down 995, Woodbridge, Quantico, Fredericksburg, all seeing the very heavy rain tonight. That is going to continue for a while. Something else that we've been talking about, the wind overnight tonight is going to be picking up. And the Weather Service has just put out a wind advisory. A wind advisory for 25 to 35 mile an hour gusts, upwards of 50 miles per hour. That's new. Yeah, I could probably see 40, 50 might be a stretching a little bit. But down to the south, around Calvert County, St. Mary's County, and the Northern Neck, I definitely think you could see it maybe even up to 55 miles per hour there. But again, National Weather Service seeing this, we could have gusts upwards of 40 to 50 miles per hour tonight. This goes till 6 a.m. tomorrow. The winds really pick up tonight after about 10, 11 o'clock. So when you tune in 11 o'clock tonight, we're going to start to see those winds picking up here as this storm, Michael, makes its way closer to our area. Now it's still going to pass well to our south, but it's interacting with a cold front cold air back to the west. We've got this system moving in, so those two come together and create a stronger storm just off the coast, and that's what's going to happen overnight. 6 o'clock, there's the heavy rain right along I-95, staying fairly heavy around Fredericksburg, over toward the northern neck around 7 o'clock. By around 8 o'clock tonight, look at all the heavy rain around, around portions of uh, southern Maryland. This is why you folks in southern Maryland, everybody, Prince George's County, Anne Arundel, Waldorf, uh, Charles County, Calvert, St. Mary's, the northern neck, all under a flash flood watch tonight, so please remember turn around don't drown uh, you want to make sure you uh, arrive safely by midnight tonight moving out once it moves out that's when the cooler air and the wind really begin to pick up and that's what we're going to see tonight so overnight tonight we could see some trees down in the area don't be surprised tomorrow to wake up to a few power outages but this moving on through and in behind it well as i said we get a lot cooler look at now uh, 79 still near 80 degrees today tomorrow we'll wake up about 20 degrees cooler than this as you make your way out tomorrow morning make sure the kids have the jackets out of the bus stop much cooler 56 and breezy up to 63